Hi, Paul Donovan here from avtechnician.ca, your YouTube channel associated with tips and tricks for AV technicians. So I made a video not too long ago related to using ceiling speakers in hotels and banquet rooms. If you'd like to watch that video before you watch this one, please click the link below, watch that video and then come back and watch this one or watch this one first and then click on the other video related to ceiling speakers. Today I'm going to talk about the, uh, the idea of bringing your own sound system into a hotel, ballroom, meeting room, or conference center. Now, um, one of the things that's happening a lot in hotels nowadays is that when you use your own sound system, you override the need for using the ceiling speakers that are built into the hotel room. And as you know, I've already mentioned to you, ceiling speakers in hotels and ballrooms are not always the best of quality. Sometimes, in fact, they're quite crappy to be polite. So you need to bring in your own PA system. Now I typically when I do an event where I'm bringing in my own sound system I bring a minimum of six speakers to the room. Now if it's a little tiny room of course I wouldn't do that but you, I'm talking about a meeting room that can possibly seat let's say a, a dining setup for 300, 400, even 500 people. That's typically a ballroom size thing that's uh, about well, I won't measure because I forget measurements, but big room, but not huge room. But I will typically bring in six speakers, and I have a tendency to believe that I don't want all six of those speakers set up at the front of the room because that's overkill. It's wonderful if you want to set up a room that's narrow and long and wide, but it doesn't do any good when the room is deep as well. Because what happens is if you set all your speakers at the front of the room, it's nice and loud at the front of the room, and the people at the front of the room are covering their ears and complaining about loud, the people at the back of the room are going, eh, what's that? Because they can't hear. So just like we do in hotel rooms where we use the ceiling speakers where the sound is distributed around the room, we want to try to do the same thing with our six speakers or even an eight speaker setup we want to distribute the speakers around the room. So I'm going to try to demonstrate a little bit about what I'm talking about. So start off with, naturally you're gonna to wanna to have a couple of speakers at the front of the room. I typically like to place those speakers right at the edge of the riser or stage, near the podium. Now be careful not to place the speaker behind the microphone at the podium, because if you do, you're liable to find you're having a major trouble with feedback but I like to place those speakers in the front line of the stage, but a lot of times customers will complain about the st speaker sticking up and blocking the view of the stage. So if it's possible, I will take the speakers off the stands and set them right on the corners of the stage. And I will also tilt them upwards just a little bit. If I'm standing them vertically, I'll tilt them up a little bit. If I'm laying them horizontally, I definitely will tip them up. What that does basically is that it fires the sound up over the heads of the people at the front, which is primarily your VIPs and head table, and you don't want them going deaf. So what I often do is I have that tilted up enough that the sound doesn't hit them directly, but the sound bounces around on top of them and comes down and basically covers the middle section front row. And if there's, let's say there's four rows, it'll cover the first and second row in that center section. Those speakers also I tend to put a little bit louder than any other speakers I'm going to put in the room because I also want the rest of the room to have the feeling that the sound is coming from the front. And therefore I set those speakers to be a little towards the, a little louder. Now the next set of speakers depends on whether you're doing a six or an eight speaker setup. If you're doing a six and the room is not too deep, um, I have two areas you can put them in. One area I tend to put them in is the front corners, say opposite to where the opposite ends of the projection screens. I'll set them in the corner so that they are covering the sound for the right and the left wings, the quadrant, the quadrant that's in the white, right and left side at the front. Those speakers are great because at that point you can probably have them 10 or 15 feet away from the first table and people won't get too angry with the volume being too loud and complain. Or even worse, I've seen people turn the speakers around, unplug them, turn them off because they thought it was too loud. And then you have an entire quadrant that going, huh? Because somebody was being, you know, doing that to you. Now, 
If I have an eight speaker setup, that's where I will put those. But if I have a six speaker setup, I might decide instead to, to move those speakers up to between the first and second row and aim them sort of across the room so that they are covering the front quadrant, two rows, three rows, aiming up straight to the center back area. Now there's a risk with that one is that the first quadrant on your left and the right, those people might not get enough sound. There's a possibility of that. But you are ensuring that you're sending sound across. So where possible, I set those speakers against the side walls on the right and the left, and I aim them at a 90 degree angle from the platform or the riser, and that way the sound comes across the room and gets people all the way in the second and third rows. But you do have to be cautious that you do miss your quarters, your quarter quadrants. Um, so that's what I do there. Now the next set of speakers, I primarily use them at the back as reinforcement for a variety of reasons. Now I could place them in the back corners and fire them inwards to cover the back row or two of tables. But what that ends up doing is it, is it may cause that center back row people might not get sound clearly. But that's okay if I'm not too wide in the room. But my best position for putting the back speakers is almost directly opposite the stage speakers, maybe a little bit wider. I place those speakers in that zone because this way they are moving forward with the sound, covering the whole center section, maybe as far as the first two rows of tables, three rows possibly. So there I've got a scenario of speakers that are now surrounding the room, giving everybody a, a jot of sound. Now, if the hotel has given me permission to plug into the ceiling speakers, and very few hotels will ever say no, um, some hotels will charge you a fee for doing so, but if they allow you to do so, then what I will do is I'll have another fader that I will set up that will be just to feed the sound to the ceiling speakers. Now, you're going to say, Paul, didn't you say that the ceiling speakers are crappy? I did. But oftentimes they are floating over top of the audience and you don't give them a lot of volume. You just give them so that you have a sense of sound coming from them. Not so much to blare out. And what that does is it fills in the little gaps that your PA system might not do. So consider maybe adding the house speaker system into your mix on a separate fader. Now I have talked about having these rows of speakers and I've talked about faders. If you're running a, a sound system, it is nice if you can wire your speakers so that you can control them from the mixer board. Each row of speakers is independently controlled, not left-right, although you can use a left-right channel, but what you're doing is the speakers on the stage have a slider of their own, the speakers on the sides have a slider of their own, speakers at the back have a slider of their own, if you're using the house speakers, it's on its own slider. If you're using eight speakers, basically as if you're doing this nicely, you've got an eight speaker PA system and you're feeding into the house system, you need five sliders. Now, a lot of mixer boards, the better mixer boards have of course the left right channel sliders, but some of them often have four subgroup channels or two aux sends and some boards, if they've got, they've got two aux sends and then they've got two FX sends. So it gives you a lot of choice for methodology for getting your sound to go out. So I do these things and what I find is really great is that a lot of times people will say, wow, I really enjoyed the quality of sound. I very seldom get people complaining about, oh, it was too loud or, oh, it was too soft. Now I have done a few AGMs recently where there are floor microphones on the floor for people to make comments and questions to the, to the, the, the head table. What I do there is a little trick that often people don't notice is that I will place those microphone uh, controls, I'll put them so that they feed to the sliders at a slightly higher volume than the microphones coming off the stage. What that does is because then I feed it to the back row, the back row speakers at a little higher volume for those microphones only what that does is it sends the, the sound forward to the stage and lets the people on the stage be able to hear clearly what is being said on the floor microphones. So assuming I have a mixer board where I can control these things better, uh, what I often find is this is the best way for me to trick the room 
where the speakers on the stage at the front are slightly louder so that people throughout the room hear the center speakers and know that the sound is coming from the front. But the floor mics, the sound is coming a little brighter from the back speakers and people are looking and realizing that, that sound is coming from the back, or in this case, the floor microphones. It's a trittle, tr little trick, subtle thing that you can do to enhance the quality of sound for events. Now, the events that I'm talking about are events that primarily have spoken word. Uh, if you're getting into events where you've got bands and uh, musicians and things that need a better quality system, well, there you need to move, move into the different things. A lot of bands and DJs will bring their own sound system anyway, so you can be independent from them. Uh, but if you find yourself doing an event where not only are your speakers being used for the spoken word of the event, but are also being used by the entertainment, well, then you need to have a conversation with the entertainment to ensure that the speakers you're providing will provide them with the level and volume of sound that they need for the DJ and entertainment. But I work with a lot of very basic speakers, passive speakers with independent amplifiers and independent sliders from my mixer board, and I find that I can get sound that is so beautiful that the audience, the members in the event, they will come to me and say, oh, I could hear everything, thank you. And that's important. And you like to get compliments from your customers. So there's my tips and tricks for today about using a PA system in a ballroom. Remember, if you want to hear my story related to using the built-in speakers and the ceilings in ballrooms, please click the link below for another video related to ceilings and speakers, ceiling speakers. This is Paul Donovan. Thank you for watching another, another video on avtechnician.ca. Please check out my website at www.avtechnician.ca. Please don't forget to like this video and do subscribe. I hope to look forward to opportunity to share more videos with you. Thank you for watching.